This is a demonstration of how to use the art brush. So the art brush, it's kind of like, just imagine yourself um, painting something on a piece of paper. You would have a paintbrush and you set it down your paper and then you drag it and it makes a line. Um, that's kind of what the art brushes do. So we're gonna use an art brush to draw all of these little drape lines here. What I have um, pictured here is actually just a JPEG, it's a screenshot, and we're gonna vectorize it. And what is what I like about the drape lines is that you can see they start kind of thick at the top, and then towards the end, they're much thinner and sharp. So we use an art brush to do that. I actually do already have one that's vectorized right over here. This is not a JPEG, this is a vectorized object, so I can click it. And you can see it's just two anchor points is all it is. One anchor point here and one here. Yeah, there's handlebars so I can like move it around. Um, so, um, so let's go ahead and look and see how to do that. Oh look, this is actually just a regular line. I just noticed, see, double click it, it was grouped. I double clicked, I'm gonna pull that guy out. Um, there is no art brush applied to that one. So. Okay, so I'm gonna hit window. I know that's cut off from your screen. Um, and then go to brushes, F5 is a keyboard shortcut. Okay, so there is an art brush already drawn that was drawn previously. If you open up an Illustrator file, you are not going to have that. Um, but anyways, if I click this, I'm gonna hit the letter A and select with the A tool because this is in a group. And I only wanna select just this one line, so I use the white arrow. Um, I can click this art brush and you can see right away it changed it so that it's a little bit wider at the bottom and goes to like a thin tip at the top. If I hit the pen tool, I can draw like any shape, right? That's just my normal pen tool shape. If I select it, I can choose the art brush and it just kind of changes it. Let's pull this art brush out and inspect it. So I click drag and I dropped it. Okay, so it's just a tiny, tiny little thing. Look at this guy. I'm gonna zoom in some more. I'm gonna hit the letter A. So now I selected it. You can see it's just one, two, three, four, five, six little anchor points. So somebody literally just drew the shape. I'm gonna copy it right now. Hold shift, clicking and dragging, click. I probably don't need that extra anchor point. Click and drag, click. I can hit the letter A. Maybe I make it a little straighter. Maybe I zoom in to have a bit more control. Woo, letter A, okay. So I kind of just drew it myself. So, you know, you guys probably don't already have this um, brush in your brushes folder. So you can just draw one yourself fairly easily. Um, and then you select the thing that you drew. This one does, I don't, hmm, let me double click this guy. Oh yeah, this guy has an outline and a fill. Usually when I do brushes, I usually don't do a stroke. I don't think it really matters to be honest with you. I'm just gonna leave the fill, but obviously I guess they both work. And then now what you do, I'm gonna move my colors. I'm gonna click drag and just drop it into my brush palette. Okay, and now a menu comes up. What kind of brush would I like? And it's giving me three options that aren't grayed out. Scatter, art, or pattern. Well, in this case, we want an art brush because again, that's like taking a paintbrush and putting the paintbrush on one side of the paper and dragging it over. That's what's gonna happen with this shape. It starts where it's thick and gets dragged into the shape. So I'm gonna do art brush, and we will learn what pattern brush is. Maybe once you learn pattern, it'll help you understand the difference between art and pattern. Art gets dragged out. And we have lots of different choices here. I encourage you to click the buttons, play around, see what they all do. It's pretty self-explanatory, especially as you just start clicking and trying them. Um, but, but the one thing I will recommend is to change the color. So right now it's black because I drew it in black, but let's say I wanna make um, a drape line and I want it to be gray or some other color. Um, it will always stay black. And, and so in order to give myself the, op you know, the option to change colors, you have to change the colorization method. You have to switch it out from none and choose tints. That's just how it works, okay. So I'll say, okay, cool. So now I'm gonna hit command zero I'm on a Mac, if you're on a PC, you would say control zero. Look how teeny it is. And then I'm gonna hit Z and we're gonna go up here and I'm gonna click one of these brush strokes and I'm just gonna click my new one. You, I mean, I don't know why I clicked my new one, but um, I'm just gonna change the color from black and green. You can see there it is, it's green. Okay, but anyways, 
This is a JPEG. This is not vectorized. There's no anchor point. So now I want to use that brush to draw it here. So I'm going to fill letter P. I'm going to click one time there. I'm going to click one time, but then I'm going to click and drag to pull up my handlebar to kind of mimic the curve. And I'm done. So I'm going to do the letter P to finish, or I'm going to the letter A. Where is it? Okay, I don't have a stroke color. Let's change that. You know, when we're tracing, I think it's okay to use a rather obvious color, an obnoxious one, if you will, just so it's like really easy to see. So right off the bat, like it's not using our art brush because it's not thinner at one end. So I'm going to click it and I'm going to go find our art brush. And there it is. I just had to click it. So what I recommend probably doing for this is to go ahead and um, trace out all your um, drape lines and then select them all at the end. And then you can just apply the art brush to all of them at the end as well. I'm clicking and dragging. I'm gonna hit the letter P to reset the pen tool. I'm gonna click one time. I'm gonna click one more time. I'm gonna click and drag. And again, I just wanna remind everyone I am using a mouse. You don't wanna do this on your trackpad. Okay, that one was a little off. So I'm gonna hit the letter A, which gives me my white arrow and I can move my anchor point. I can zoom in more if I'm having some trouble getting it exactly where I want. Here we go, command negative or control negative if you're on a PC. I'm gonna pan by holding the space bar. I'm gonna go back to the letter P. Click, click and drag, P. Click, click and drag, holding shift. Mm, click one time. I'm gonna go to the letter A to give me that white arrow. I'm gonna bring in that handlebar. I'm holding shift. Pan with the space bar, P. So also when I'm drawing this, I'm starting with a thicker point. I'm, I'm being pretty um, consistent about that. Otherwise else your brushes will get flipped. We can always fix it, but it's always nice if you don't have to. So I'm just making an effort to start with a thicker point and then end on the thin one. Hmm, I'm way too close. Command negative, zoom out. Um, too late, so I have to hit the letter A and pull out my handlebar. Okay, so you got the idea. So keep drawing all of those. When you're done, you can switch to the black arrow and hold down the shift key to select each line that you drew and then go ahead and select the art brush at the same time. I'm gonna hold option and just bring it out so you guys can see. Yeah, it's been applied. So this just gives your flat sketches a little bit more dimensions, easy to do, and I just wanna make sure you guys all know how to create an art brush.